Hey everybody, Rachel here, Treehouse Fiber Arts. How are you all doing? I don't know about you, but I have been knitting and crocheting like a crazy woman here. And I was on Ravelry the other day, just um, just kind of updating all my projects. I like to keep track of my projects on Ravelry. And I realized I have a ton to share. And I wanted to come on here and share with you all what I've been working on. And, and I'm hoping that you will let me know in the comments what you are all working on as well. I have a bunch of knitting, a bunch of crocheting, and I just got back from the Portland, it's called the Rose City Yarn Crawl. It's in Portland, Oregon. I went with my friend Joyce, Ruby Moss Cottage, you might know her, and then a new friend of mine, Julie. Both of the ladies, we all met there, the three of us had a VRBO, and we spent four days um, just kicking around the city and outskirts of Portland and all their beautiful yarn stores. So I will share with you I know I like to see what people purchase when they're on these fun events. And so I'm going to share with you at the end what I purchased. I didn't go crazy, very focused, um, but I'll share with you at the end a little bit about the Portland Rose City Yarn Crawl as well. <sighs> the sun is shining. Look at, I have sunbeams coming in on me. This is such a beautiful day. We are having such warm weather here in Michigan. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, I'm coming from the great state of Michigan, the west side of the state near Grand Rapids, and um, we're having an unseasonably warm, we had an unseasonably warm winter. It's like we had winter for maybe two or three weeks. Today's going to be 70. It's going to drop again this weekend, but I'm enjoying this pretend spring we're having. And I got done just in time, my Sophie scarf. I've never made one of these. I think everyone has made one. I ended up, this was some yarn that I wanted to find on the yarn crawl that we just went on. I was looking for something that would be really soft to the skin um, in a bright pop color. And um, I kind of like the idea of cotton and or silk cashmere. I was looking for cashmere. I didn't find any, but um, I'll share with you one thing I did get on the crawl. I got this Cumulus. Now I've used this before. I used this for, I had multi-colors I made in a granny square. I made a few, several granny squares and I put them together in, um, made it into a bag, which I'll pop a picture in here of that. But this Cumulus, I love this stuff. And isn't this the best colorway for spring? Um, Cumulus is from Juniper Farm. It is Israeli Mako cotton. I don't know if I'm saying that right. With a touch of nylon for strength. This would be so great for a baby blanket or baby clothes or even a blanket for me. I think it's beautiful. It's 94% cotton and 6% nylon. And the um, put up on this is 250 yards per 100 grams. So the suggested needle size is a seven through nine. I ended up using a size five. And this is another purchase I made on the yarn crawl. I have always loved the Addy Turbo finish on the needles, but I did not care for the Addy cords. And I always said if Addy and Chiagu would marry and come up with a needle that had the Chiagu red cord, or at least the style of that cord, with my nice Addy finish, I would be so happy. And I must be late to the game, or these are brand new, but this is from Addy. Scassell owns Addy now, but these are still German made, and these are Unicorn, E-W-E, -E, Unicorn Turbos. I love these. Now, one thing that kind of bummed me out and I'm going to take these back and see if they will replace them for me. I love this cord is so malleable. It's almost I mean, it's it's very much like an Addy cord. I don't know, it just kind of reminds me of the barber cord. But I love this spiral texture. These are so easy to hold. I love the point. They're not too sharp. I'm not good with sharps. I must not, I don't do enough lace knitting maybe. But I love these, love these. So I knit this whole project on a size five. This is a 24 inch needle. And um, you know, we've all seen the Sophie scarf before, but uh, it's just this beautiful, easy 
very narrow scarf, which I love how you can wear it inside of coats like that. And it has an I-cord edging. It's just, and, and it's just scrumptious, um, scrumptious garter stitch. So my, my sadness, my sadness about the cord is as I was knitting, I didn't feel it, very smooth joins, but I looked down, as I was looking down, I thought this looks so weird. And my cord is splitting in half lengthwise, like the long way. I don't know, now I can't even find it. Here it is. I don't know if you can tell. I don't know if you can even tell, but it's splitting in half. So, hmm, I'm bummed. I hope this is just a fluke because I would love the set of these if that does not happen to the cord. So I'm going to be taking these to my local yarn store that sells this brand and see if I can get a replacement or a refund. I want a replacement because I love them. I also got these in a size one, 32 inch that I use for socks when I knit the heels, toes, and cuffs. Back to the Sophie scarf. I don't think I have anything else to tell you about it other than um, this is my inaugural wear. I literally got it done yesterday. I did it in two days. It's so fast and so fun once you get the rhythm of it down. And um, I just used a clicker. Make sure you, I think it helped. I clicked after every row to keep track of this uh, eight row repeat that the whole thing goes around. So as everyone on the planet, I really like this and I will be making more because this was just so pleasant to knit. So back to those awesome cords. Let's see. I'll show you some socks that I got done. These are sort of done. Legacy Fiber Arts. Oh my gosh, you guys. This, first of all, is the colorway that was the February colorway um, for the Fearless Knit Along. It's all done. Check out Legacy Fiber Arts if you want to learn more about it. But this is Sue's Cozy Toes. Oh, just beautiful. This was the socks cane called Fearless. And I happen to have this purple colorway of Legacy Fiber Arts in not cozy toes, but it doesn't really matter, in their steel toes. In that awesome purpley lavender color, I love how these turned out. Now I knit them on my knitting machine, which has a front and bed, uh, front and back bed or ribber. So I'm able to knit tubes on my knitting machine. And so I ran the whole skein through the tube and got a really long tube and then cut in the toes, heels, and cuff. And the toe and the heel are done exactly the same way, except this is a cut in afterthought heel toe or heel and then I did my favorite two by two ribbing with Jenny's surprisingly stretchy cast off which I love and these turned out so well love them merino cashmere nylon I love Sue's cozy toes now I had this in stash and I have always loved this colorway and I did the same this is I did the same thing I pumped it out on the tube and I happen to have in my stash this goldy yellow that matches perfectly a mini of Sue's. So this is the Steel Toes base, very soft as well. Had I not known about Cozy Toes, I would say this is my favorite and most incredible <laughs> sock yarn. So this is um, called After Dinner Mints. I think Sue has it in her shop right now. I still have, oh, I see I have to take my stitch marker off. I have these prepped with just the toes and the cuff ready for uh, a lucky recipient, maybe a birthday or for Christmas, where I will put in the heel exactly where, um, exactly for them, so it fits them perfectly. So I get it to this stage. I could probably weave in the ends there, but I didn't. Um, and then we go from there. So I consider that pretty much a finish. So those are the two socks that I worked on. Are you working on socks? Any of you have a knitting machine or even one of those cool pranking sock machines? I think that would be super fun to have, but my knitting machine works so well. And I'm able to knit any 
size tube, which is kind of cool because if I'm doing like a color work sweater and it's in a fingering weight or lace weight or even DK weight, I can put it on my standard gauge knitting machine and knit the big tube, the body part. And then I just have to do the cool yoke or whatever. Okay, so that we did the Sophie scarf, we did my socks. Speaking of tubes, on the knitting machine, I did another muscle burrow. This one is actually from Knit Circus Yarns, based, uh, I believe, in Wisconsin. I think outside of Madison, or in Madison, maybe. This is their greatest of ease, I believe, is the type of their, their yarn line. And then this was a really cool... I'll just pull it apart here. We all know about the muscle bro. This was a really cool sort of gradient. Now I ran out of yarn. You can see right there at the crown. I didn't have enough yarn. I wanted to make it longer. I did try to use one skein of it, but I needed a deeper hat. So I don't know if I'd like the, to use this for the top. More ends I need to weave in because I'm still, I was thinking about it, but I'm going to keep it as is and I am going to I think it looks so great. It's got this really cool sparkly metallic to it. And then when you fold over the brim, you get a little more of that lighter color. You know, just have to judge up that hat. Let me see, first I'll go like that. And then I'll fold over the brim. Should I, dare I try the hat on? Maybe not the best with glasses, but you gotta love the Muscleboro hat. It is just such a comfortable hat to wear and fits everybody and I can do most of it on my knitting machine. Probably a little better without glasses. <laughs> but um, what else do I want to say about this? I, I do it on the number six on my knitting, knitting machine tension and then I used a size three needle to finish the two ends. Now I could on my knitting, yes, I could on my knitting machine do the decreases, but um, I don't know. There's just something about wanting to have a little hand knit, you know, instead of all machine knit, I get to do a little hand knit and, and it helped me with the sizing. I could play around with the sizing. So that is my latest muscle bra. Then, oh, I got very into the Traveler. I'm going to pull it up here on my projects page on my Ravelry here so I can talk a little bit more about it. This is the Traveler Shawl. This is by Andrea Mowry and I used Junction Fiber Mill Making Tracks. Isn't that amazing? In their Vermont Vice colorway. So it's this just really cool colorway. Uh, you know me, I like the pinks, the bright colors. Um, I ended up using two full skeins and then a quarter skein of another Making Tracks. Making Tracks is a, um, it's a beautiful yarn that Junction Fiber Mill makes. 100% wool. There's 210 yards in 100 grams. Um, they say it's DK. I'd say it's a very weighty DK and it made for a really, really big shawl. Uh, I love this style shawl that Andrea Mowry has made. I also have the shift. Um, and I this one turned out a little bit bigger than my other one. A little longer, I should say. So I'm finding that I want to fold this under a little. And then, I mean, you just plop it on and it looks good and you are ready to go. This one, I almost feel like it could be a hood. <laughs> like, I could go... If we had a cold winter, I could almost wear it. Well, I could totally wear it as a hood. So, success. Love, love the shawl. Love the colorway. And I love how this bright color ended up at the end. Isn't that cool? Really fun potato chippy knit. Another one of those knits where I definitely used my row counter because it's a, I think it was a four row repeat but with this Making Tracks, which is a great substitute for Spin Cycle, it just goes so fast because you're wondering what's coming next, what's coming next. So highly, highly, gotta tie my Sophie scarf. 
Highly recommend this pattern. This was so much fun and what a great use for this striping, kind of random striping yarn. Loved it. Um, I think that's probably all I want to talk about for that one. So I know, look at that. Socks, scarves, cowl, hat. I think that's it. I did do one other finished object. I already gave it to the recipient, my son George. He wanted another, um, he wanted one of my hand knit hats that, um, it's a design that I made. Nichols Arcade is the name of the design. And I don't have it on me right now because he is actually wearing it. So let me just pull it up here. This is Nichols Arcade. Um, I am using, I absolutely love, there's a, um, it's been in existence for a couple of years now, the, the fiber. The um, fiber is Heritage DK from North Bay Fiber. It's 50% Targi, 50% Polypay, and 150 yards are in 50 grams. And I have so many colors of um, this scrumptious, awesome, it's 100% Michigan yarn. The sheep are from Michigan. It's spun in Michigan. And I had a lot of fun putting together this pattern. I've done it in a few different colors so far. Um, and it's based on Nichols Arcade, which is this really cool indoor, small indoor shopping mall that was built, I think, in the late, maybe the early 1900s in my college town that I, um, my undergrad that I went to school in. And it just has a lot of geometric patterns on the floor and on the, all over the, the brickwork. And it inspired me to make a color work hat. The brim of the hat makes kind of like a snowflake at the top and or I shouldn't say the brim the top of the hat and the brim I like a double brim so I make mine pretty long and fold it over but you don't have to so that is the Nichols Arcade that you can find on my Ravelry and purchase it there if you're interested and it works like a dream with that Nick with that uh, North Bay fiber love that stuff love 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 Okay, so what have I been working on? Boy, that's a lot of talking. But I have been, I have some sweaters going on. And I also have some shawls going on. So, you know, why don't I quick start with either of those two. <laughs> I got this book a while ago. I'm so inspired to combine uh, my two loves of embroidery and stitching on my knitting. I mean, how cool is that? I own treehousefiberarts.com, which is a right now a very heavy stitching shop, lots of kits on cross stitch embroidery, that kind of thing. Um, so when this book came out, I was like, oh my gosh, this has got me written all over it. So I thought I'm going to make a mitt. First of all, I looked through all of my finished works of knitting art. I have two big bins up in my office where I just kind of throw stuff that I've knitted in and I grab when I want to wear it, that kind of thing. And I thought, I, there's got to be something in there that I could embroider on right now. I could not find anything. So I thought, well, I'll just knit myself so a pair of mittens. And I used, um, oh gosh, what pattern did I use? The Waiting for Winter. I think it's called that. I can look right here on my Ravelry by Susan B. Anderson. And I used, yeah, it's the Waiting for Winter Mittens and Fingerless Mitts by Susan B. Anderson. It's a great simple pattern that makes this nice gusseted finger. They just fit very well because of that gusset. And I used some yarn that I had in stash from Blue Sky Fibers. It's their wool stock worsted. And I happened to, I knew I had it in several colors because I had knit this hat a long time ago. And I thought it would be really fun to do some embroidery on the mittens to match the hat with the colors that I have. So I, that is the plan. Now the embroidery on knits book, I have, so I'll, I'll have this pink, I have a green, and I have the gray, which I don't have with me right now. But in the book, they recommended this um, 
type of embroidery stabilizer. It's a wash away embroidery stabilizer. So I picked that up and I have no idea yet what design I'm going to put on it. I do want something that matches this. So maybe I will look in, um, I don't know, maybe uh, the book itself is incredible in that it goes into such detail that if you are to stitching, you're all set. It really goes from the very beginning of stitching and how to embroider. It's got lots of how-tos. And then in the back, it's got this amazing sheet of, I mean, I could copy that right onto the stabilizer and then start stitching. So it's a beautiful book. And these Laine books, oh my gosh, they smell so good. Here's a I don't know, maybe I should just do that on my mittens, something like that. This book has a whole section just on embroidering mittens, so look at the options. And they're done, to, they have a whole section because they're done a little bit differently in that if you're doing something that's flat, like if I were to embroider the Sophie scarf, I would put it in a little hoop. And because tension is really important. And she likes the poke, the stab method where you put your needle down under the work, bring your needle up. Whereas on mittens, it's very hard to do that because it's, you know, a mitten. So um, that is a work in progress for me. And maybe next time we're together, I will have something to show you. Another book, since we're on books, after I watched the fruity knitting episode where they had the knitting for olive mom and daughter on just hearing her design uh, just hearing her talk about how she designs items and talking about her yarn inspired me to pick up this knitting for olive book because of all of the sweaters in here that are sweaters that I would make and I think I would love to wear I also placed an order on the Knitting for Olive website because the first time you order, the shipping from Denmark is free. So not only are you getting a very good value, high quality yarn with the Knitting for Olive, you get it shipped to the US for free your first time. So I indulged after that uh, episode and in looking through all the sweaters, I decided to knit, and I hope I'm gonna say this right, the Avia sweater. This picture just didn't do it justice. When I first saw the picture, I was like, it looks like a very boxy sweater, turtle kind of sort of mock neck, neck turtle, mock turtleneck sweater. But as I turned the page and kind of read more, um, I thought that was beautiful. I saw, saw the stitch work on there. The It is a half, fisherman's rib and the structure of it is a saddle shoulder which I've never done a saddle shoulder so that excited me and then the final nail in the coffin for doing this pattern was going on Instagram and seeing the finished sweaters of people the only two pictures in the book are this one and that one I just previously showed you so um, going on to Instagram was key for me to see that that was a sweater I definitely wanted to do. So the yarn came, I have it in this, I needed a big bag. I made this bag from, oh my gosh, I made this bag years ago. This was one of the first bags I made, um, from, oh, there was a bag book by a famous designer. I can't think of her name right now, but she had all this style kind of pattern bags. I bet some of you are shouting it out. If it comes to me, I will put the book down below. But the yarn came for this, and I decided on, I wanted a brownish pink. When I saw this colorway called Ballerina, I believe, let's just make sure I'm telling you the right, this is, yes, Ballerina. When this came, I was very excited. So, dropping things here. Let me pull out a stick. Lots of crinkling, I know. But I am holding the Knitting for Olive Merino with the Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair together 
And this is such a gorgeous combination. I'm so excited about this. So show me the sweater, Rachel. Right? That's what you're saying. And after a few start and stops with the half fisherman's rib, my problem was when I made a mistake, how to fix it. And it's very similar from what I've heard because I've never done brioche. That that's one of the problems with brioche. You, for you to be confident in knitting brioche, you need to be confident in fixing brioche. Isn't that always the case? Once you learn when you're a new knitter how to fix your mistakes, the world opens up. You guys, I was editing, this is Rachel of the future, which is now your present, because I have to re-record the last half of the episode, because as I was editing, I noticed that the sound just stopped. So hopefully we're getting sound. I'm trying a different technique here of recording. So back to the Sophie sweater. Here's where I am. The way that the sweater is constructed is you work the shoulder first and then you work flat down the front and back and then at the bottom of the armholes you connect and start knitting in the round. Again I mentioned before that this is the half fisherman's rib so there's a little bit of a change up when you go from knitting it flat to knitting in the round so that was kind of nice to change it up a little bit. Um, I was talking a little bit about the learning I believe and I didn't get that quite out until I got and then I got cut off but my major learning here when you're doing any kind of new stitch is when you're making your gauge swatch which we all should do play with the gauge swatch make some on purpose mistakes and learn how to fix them because when you're in your project and you're working with a combination you know holding double mohair and wool the last thing you want to do is rip out ripping out mohair is a pain so here's where I'm at. I love these barber cords, I think they're called, to hold the sleeves. That's working out really well for me. I've also tried it on. And um, this is going to be a very, very warm sweater. I don't think I mentioned this yet in the podcast, but honestly, I tried it on when I got to about here. I just put it over my shoulders and I overheated. So this could be my last mohair blend kind of sweater for a while. This will be really good when maybe, God willing, I'm old and freezing all the time, but that is not where I'm at right now. So this is the Avia, Avia, Aviaya, Aviaya. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's the sweater. Knitting for Olive. Beautiful. I'm really enjoying this construction. D very different than anything I've ever knit before. All right. The next thing I want to show. This came out from Tannis Fiber Arts. I saw the Instagram post the day before she was announcing or the day before it was just a picture of this sweater and then it was coming the next day so I logged on the next day and I got it right away this looks like such a fun sweater with the granny squares in the front that are crocheted and then you uh, knit your sweater around the granny square so that is a new pattern it's called Fleetwood and Tannis Fiber Arts is the designer she also dyes her own yarn and you can actually get a kit from her shop if you love the one she's made I wanted to use stash and so what I'm actually using is Rauma and this is Rauma that I got when I was in Norway so I've started knitting the granny squares and I'll knit three by three I'll connect them all this outer color is actually the, going to be the color of the sweater. So it's going to be a very uh, kind of more natural, less bright, although these are bright colors, I guess. But the outer round of this is actually not Rauma. I have a sweater's quantity worth of um, Plucky Yak Paca is the name. Plucky Knitter. And it's half yak, half alpaca. It's beautiful very soft to touch and I will thoroughly enjoy wearing this sweater. So I think that's all I wanted to mention about that. I've, this is just my second granny square that I've created and if I find the square is too big for the front, which I'm just feeling like it might be, maybe not, I don't know. 
If it is, I'm going to take a round out and just do one, two, three, four, five rounds instead of six. So that's, I'm, I'm basically testing it out. I'm gonna make a row and see what happens. So that's where I'm at with that, using all these wonderful colors. Yeah, Rauma, female garn. And boy, what hook am I using? I think I'm using, actually I'm using the called for hook for the granny squares. Um, and hopefully it's in here somewhere. Okay, so that is my other fun sweater I'm working on. When we were on the yard crawl in Portland, Julie surprised Joyce and I with a couple of skeins of yarn when we exited one of the yarn stores to use to make this shawl right here. It's called Her Own Wings Shawl, and it was one of the um, patterns from the crawl, I believe Starlight Knitting. Yes, Starlight Knitting Society. This was their crochet freebie if you bought something from their store. We saw it knit up in this gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Uh, so I'm so excited and I've already started it. It's Inca by Mirasol. And what Inca is, is very soft and luscious, so soft to skin. So this is going to be a gorgeous shawl. It's 64% viscose, 36% baby alpaca. A lot of times I feel the pricks with alpaca and I'm not feeling it with this. So I'm really excited about this shawl. I started it and it's neat because you first start with this band right here on the edge and that's done you uh, using the Tunisian crochet technique technique which is something I've never used before and you don't even need a special crochet hook you could fit it's just a seven row a seven stitch row but it's done in the Tunisian crochet technique and it explains it really well in the pattern so I have just started my strip 200 and some rows of the strip uh, and I'm so enjoying it and I cannot wait to continue crocheting this beautiful shawl and in that silky smooth shine it's got such a gorgeous sheen and depth of color it's gonna be a really pretty shawl so that is my latest shawl and then I'm getting ready for let me clear the decks here. I'm getting ready for a mystery make-along, Helen Stewart. I'm so excited. I used to love Helen, St Helen Stewart's make-alongs back in the day, and I was part of her. She had a club where we'd get uh, a shawl pattern every, like, six weeks or something, and I, I knit quite a few of her lacy shawls. Well, the latest mystery make-along to come out is the 24 Birds make-along. Let me see if I can tell you a little bit about it. She's using her Curious Handmade Percentage Checklist. It, it, that's the pattern style, and it's so great because row by row, you can check off when you're done with a row. And William Morris is her inspiration for this cal. So what I did is I went online for in order to pick out, we need to pick four, four skeins of yarn. And the beauty of it is it's all, you can use your hand dyed skeins. So many of us have single skeins of hand dye. We don't know what to do with them. And this is a, her shawls are a great way to go into your stash and just pull. So I found some pictures of William Morris wallpaper and fabric that I liked, a couple of them, and came up with kind of a color way around that with some skeins of yarn that I've already got wound up because I was going to use them for a different project. These are all, these are hand dyed, different makers. I have no idea who, I know this one because it's in here. This is a hundred ravens hand dyed. I have no idea what these two are. I'll have to look it up. Maybe I have them in my stash at on Ravelry. And then I've got this really cool deep blue color from Plucky. These are all fingering weight. Now if I start and I realize that I want to have something with a little bit of variegation, I'm going to throw this in. I'm just not quite sure when it's game time, when I get that pattern and I start knitting, 
I'm going to decide. I looked on Vullenvine's website and she is a dyer that is doing a kit, a couple of kits for the make-along and she dyed them up sort of like these, just t very tonal with little flecks. Uh, so I think I'm in the right, I think I'm in the right zone in terms of my hand dyed yarn. So very excited about that. Oh, I've got some tags. So one of these is Brew City Yarns. These are th I think I picked this up at a yarn con in Chicago many years ago. It's uh, called Angel Baby. I bet it's this one. And that's a merino wool cashmere nylon. And then I do have the tags. The other one, let's see, this is kind of fun to see what I'm using because these are these are deep dash. Um, this is Sweet Sparrow Yarns in Peninsula's third Peninsula's third cutting. You know, I think these might that might be maybe that's this. I think that is from my wool, um, wool and honey um, monthly membership that I used to be part of, too. So, anyways, I'm very excited to start that. That starts the end of March, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, I love the design. Okay, so I think that covers. Everything I've worked on, now I want to share a little bit with you on what I got from the Yarn Crawl in Portland. So the Rose City Yarn Crawl, it's been going around for, uh, it's been going on for many, many years. Uh, it is so well run. This is the artwork for this year's Yarn Crawl, Rose City Yarn Crawl 2024. And I got myself the bag, and then every time you go into a store, they have little buttons. You can take a button, and if you go to all the stores, you get this finisher's button. So there, there you go. Really nice bag, long handles. I know I will enjoy this bag. So let's just pull out and see some things I got, shall we? Wool Addicts by Lang Yarns. I really like this yarn for socks. And oh, this one's falling apart in my bag, but I love this. I I bought a skein of this from Wool Wool and Wool Folk Wool and Company. That's what. It is. Oh my gosh, all the wool names. Wool and Company outside of Chicago, and I used it on my machine. It worked really well, and I thought this was a really nice colorway. So I picked that up from a store. I also picked up a couple of weights. One of the stores had knitting machines which was really cool to be in a store that had actual knitting machines and you could actually rent time on their knitting machines. They sold little items that you'd use and I needed some weights. The weights that I'm currently currently using on my machine are like from the 1970s or 80s and this part here is plastic and the little notches are slowly breaking off. So I got myself a pair of these really nice weights. Also some sock yarn. I thought this was a nice uh, colorway for my, my sons or my husband and the men in my family. Infinite, Infinity Sock, Sock Line by Lannis Dunord. I don't know if I'm saying that right. That's what it's going to stripe up to be and look like. Excited to have that. So I got sock yarn, of course. And then I got a little sock yarn for myself. I've wanted a sock yarn that has alpaca. This is 50% extra fine alpaca, 30% or fine merino, 30% baby alpaca, 20% nylon. It's a sport weight. I love the colors. It kind of reminded me of Sue's after dinner mints. So I picked it up and I look forward to knitting that up for myself. At uh, Naughty Lamb, that was our last stop, I got some of their store. Um, yarn the owner of the store actually dyes yarn these are the it's called lamb good fibers the first one I got I thought was so pretty it reminded me of the Pacific Northwest and I think it work, would work really well for um, color work or a shawl or in a sweater and while I was there I picked up the doodle pack for Portland are you familiar with this Pacific knit company the their decks of cards and I have the basic doodle card deck their decks of cards and each card has the motif 
you know, different motifs on each card. So when you put the cards together, you can, you know, design your own color work. And combining this deck with the Portland Doodle Pack, you can see some of the, the, um, motifs there very Portland I think it'll be really fun so maybe I will make myself a little souvenir with these colors and then I was at the front and they had this black label lamb good yarns lamb good fibers and the black label is only sold in the store a they had a beautiful cowl that was knit up in these colors and that's what sold me I tell you the models always sell don't they <laughs> So that was my uh, Lamb Good Yarns, and that is really all, you know, that I purchased. I'm trying to think. Yeah, that was really all that I purchased. So that's it for the Rose City Yarn Crawl. We had a great time. The shops were so inviting, so well organized. Each one had its own different offerings and, and um, oh my gosh, so many great trunk shows. Trunk shows that um, not only indie dyed yarn trunk shows that were fantastic, but oh, some pla one place had a button lady and amazing mugs and pottery. And I mean, it was just such a welcoming time and it was so great to be back in the Pacific Northwest again and I highly recommend it if you're in Portland and uh, or you're not in Portland and make it a girls trip for next year because it's that good of a yarn crawl also it helps when you go with two very fun people with southern accents they were making fun of my accents my accent can you believe that I don't have an accent right Anyways, I'm wondering if any of you have done any yarn crawls lately and which ones do you recommend? I have my sights now set for, for sure, Vermont Sheep and Wool in the fall. I'm looking forward to some festivals as well as Michigan Fiber Festival in Allegan. That's in August. Um, but uh, nothing else too big planned in terms of knitting uh, events. But I know there's some great ones coming. So I think that's it. I welcome you to come to treehousefiberarts.com. That is my landing home for not only my knitting designs, uh, but also my shop, which carries beautiful, beautiful designs in cross stitch and in embroidery, as well as great notions across that you can really use across all types of fiber arts. I am planning this summer well, first of all, this spring, I'm going to do some sort of crochet along and you see a little hint happening there with some beautiful cotton yarn, which um, it's from Lori Holt of Be In My Bonnet. Amazing colors. And it's kind of like a, it's a sport weight yarn. I'll share a little bit about that, but I'm starting to carry that in my shop for crochet as well as using for punch needle. So look for my punch needle offerings to increase a bit over the next several months. And in July, Lori Holt from Be In My Bonnet is going to be doing a fabulous punch needle along. And I know I am going to join in and I will be kidding up her um two new designs that are going to be coming out. If you go to my website, you can see what those punch needle designs are. Sue and I, Sue from Legacy Fiber Arts, will be talking about it on our Floss Toss channel. So if you're interested in um, more of that, look for that here on this channel and at Floss Toss because we will be punching along with Lori, her really pretty designs. But I will be sharing more with you, more about that with you in the next mm, couple months. So... That's where I'm at with the shop. Um, come on over, check it out. We have a lot of fun over at Floss Toss as well. I think Sue and I will be recording next week and sharing some of our needlework adventures. And uh, 
that's about it for me. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been great being here with you. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful next couple of weeks of crafty, beautiful things that and spending time on things that you love and you enjoy and, and bring you energy and excitement. This is such a great time to be a fiber artist. And I just thank you for joining me. Bye.